Hey there guys, Michael C from the Tower Tech here. I was reflecting on my last video that I did around my custom water-cooled loop. I was talking about the voltages that I'd applied to my CPU to achieve an overclock of 4.3 gigahertz. And I'd been a bit delinquent, I hadn't adjusted the voltage down, I'd pretty much just adopted what the motherboard had set for me. I was going to do a video on me tweaking that back down. The overclocker in me wants to eke out more performance. So let's have a look to see if we can get my 6900K up to 4.5 gigahertz. So this video is going to be a quick overview of the settings that I've applied, the various voltages that I've used within the BIOS to achieve the overclocks that I've got. Now this is New Year's 2016, tomorrow will be 2017, so this is going to be quite a brief overview so that I can get out and get a beer. So let's get straight into it. So here we are in the BIOS settings. The first thing that you need to scroll down and check in CPU features is to make sure that your C state is disabled. This is gonna prohibit your overclocking capability, limit the total overclock that you can get to. Once you've got C states disabled, escape out of the screen and go back to our overclocking settings. And we're gonna use a VCC in voltage of 1.91 volts. That's the voltage that goes into the actual CPU itself and we are going to use a vCore voltage of 1.35 volts. You can probably see that I've bunked the CPU ring voltage up just a smidge. This is normally sitting at 1 volt and I've just increased that to 1.05 volts. We're also going to use something called the Extreme Memory Profile preset this is a preset on the ram itself so when you load this into the bios it will automatically set the frequency it will also set your latency and it'll also set your voltage for the memory and you can see here that that's automatically set this memory at 3 gigahertz with the latency settings of 14 16 16 and 35 all at 1.35 volts so if we f10 save our settings and exit We can perform a post test, make sure that we can boot into Windows, and we can crack on with our stability test. You can see straight away that we've got pretty fantastic boot times. Part of that's going to be down to the memory and CPU, but an awful lot of that is going to be down to the SSD that I've got, which is the Samsung 950 NVMe boot drive. Starting our stability test using ADA64 Extreme, kick that off and you can see straight away our CPU temperatures have shot up to the 68 degree range. So we'll leave this running for 30, 35 minutes or so, come back to it and see how it's doing. So we're 35 minutes into the test now, there's been absolutely no throttling at all. So that's a pretty stable overclock. You probably want to run this for a couple of hours just to make absolutely sure that your overclock is rock solid stable. I've done that already, so we're going to stop the test here at 34 minutes. You can see very, very quickly the temperatures drop off. We're now down to the 30 to 37 degree range, and that's going to continue dropping off now down to 29 degrees. So this video comes with my normal call out to Jay's Two Cents who inspired the build that I've created. There's a link to his channel down in the description. Do check it out. There's some fantastic videos on how you can build a computer like this. The reason that I call that out is that this CPU is underwater. The settings that I'm going to take you through are not, I repeat, are not safe under air. Do this at your own risk. If you crank the voltage as high as I have done in this video, your CPU is certainly going to throttle under air. Or worse, you're actually going to do permanent damage to your hardware. That could include your CPU and your main board. Let's go and jump into the settings and take a look. We're now going to attempt an overclock to 4.5 gigahertz. We're going to need to significantly step our voltage on. So we've increased our VCC in voltage to 1.95 volts 
and our V core voltage to 1.42 volts. We've left our ring voltage at 1.05 volts. So F10, save and exit, and straight into our stability test. And you can see we've gone from 4.4 gigahertz as a rock solid overclock. We've stepped that on by a mere 100 megahertz and that test has barely made it more than a couple of seconds in before it's crashed. And indeed actually crashed the entire system, not just the stability test. You can see here the whole system shut itself down, gone into reboot. I tried this time and time and time again tried tweaking every setting that I could think of under the sun, I could not get the system stable at 4.5 gigahertz. So there we have it guys. A little bit disappointed that I didn't manage to get the 6900K up to 4.5 gigahertz, albeit we have managed to achieve a rock solid 4.4 gigahertz, which is a full 100 megahertz faster than I had it previously. Is that gonna make a whole heap of difference to the performance in Premiere Pro and games? Probably not. Did I enjoy the process of going through it? Absolutely yes. I hope you're well wherever you are. I hope you have a fantastic 2017. If you're not already subscribed, please do so by bashing the button down there. And I'll see you in my next video.